there. Welcome to Porch in It. This is Kim. Thank you for coming to my porch. Um, today is day 284th day of reading the Bible through in a year. <clears throat> and we've been diligent to do this every day of the year. And it's been such a blessing and such an adventure getting into the Word every day. And hopefully every one of us has been in the habit now of getting up getting in the word every day whether it's in the morning or at night we get up we get in the word so praise God we just thank you father for this word to us minister lead it lead us minister it to our spirit man lead us Lord God lead us by your spirit thank you that you speak through your word and that if we incline our ears to hear and our eyes to see we will walk in what you say we choose to walk in what you show us help us to choose to walk within what you've shown us and we thank you that our hearts are wanting to hear your voice wanting to hear you what you want us for us and we thank you that we can make these choices for good and not evil to bring hope and we thank you that you've given us a future and a hope and um, not for evil but for good you've given us but Lord as we call on you that's when you can minister and lead us when we look to you in Jesus name amen so today is Matthew 9 and Luke 7 so Matthew 9 I'm gonna read again out of the Amplified Bible to amplify it, it helps everybody and Jesus getting into a boat crossed to the other side and came to his own town Capernaum and behold they brought to him a man paralyzed and prostrate by illness lying on a sleeping pad and when Jesus saw their faith he said to the paralyzed man take courage son your sins are forgiven and the penalty remitted and behold some of the scribes said to themselves this man blasphemies he claims the rights and pro and of God but Jesus knowing seeing their thoughts said why do you think evil and harbor malice in your hearts for which is easier to say your sins are forgiven and the penalty remitted or to say get up and walk. But in order that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins and remit the penalty, he then said to the paralyzed man, get up, pick up your sleeping pad and go to your own house. And he got up and went away to his own house. When the crowd saw it, they were struck with fear and awe and they recognized God and praised and thanked him who had given such power and authority to men. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's office, and he said to him, Be my disciple. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and especially wicked sinners came and sat and reclined with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your master eat with tax collectors and those sinful? But when Jesus heard it, he replied, Those who are strong and well have no need of a physician, but those who are weak and sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come not to call and invite the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to Jesus inquiring, Why is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus replied to them, Can the wedding guests mourn while the bridegroom is still with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. And no one puts a, a piece of cloth that has not been shrunk on an old garment, for such a patch tears away from the garment, and a worse rent tear, tear is made. Neither is new wine put in old wineskin, for if, it, if the skin bursts and are torn in pieces, the wine is spilled and the skins are ruined. But now new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. While he was talking this way to them, Behold, a ruler entered and kneeling down, worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just now died, but come and lay your hands on her and she will come to life. And Jesus got up and accompanied him with his disciples. 
And behold, a woman who had suffered from a flow of blood for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she kept saying to herself, If I only touch his garment, I shall be restored to health. Jesus turned around and seeing her, he said, Take courage, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And at once the woman was restored to health. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute player and the crowd making an uproar and din, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed and jeered at him. But when the crowd had been ordered to go outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the news about this spread through all the district. As Jesus passed on from there, two blind men followed him, shouting loudly, have pity and mercy on us, son of David. When he reached the house and he went in, the blind men came to him and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith and trust and reliance, be it done to you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus earnestly and sternly charged them, See that you let no one know about this but they went off and blazed and spread his fame abroad throughout the whole district and while they were going away behold a dumb man under the power of a demon was brought to jesus and when the demon was driven out the dumb man spoke and the crowds were stunned with bewildered wonder saying never before has anything like this been in israel but the pharisees said he drives out demons through and with the help of the prince of demons. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news, the gospel of the kingdom, and curing all kinds of disease and every weakness and infirmity. And when he saw the throngs, he moved with pity and sympathy for them, because they were bewildered like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples, The harvest is indeed plentiful, but the laborers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to force out and thrust labors into his harvest. So we pray that right now, Lord, you, you know, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We pray right now that the Lord of the harvest, we pray, Lord of the harvest, that you will send forth labors into your harvest, into his harvest, into your harvest. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for that. I saw that. It's like the fields are so ready right now and someone needs to pick it. And so he's saying that there, that we need to pray for more, more people out there, picking them to gather in the harvest so they don't die. So we need to be soul winners, constantly praying and, and ready for the opportunity, whatever opportunity is there or our conversation to be encouraging other people that hear us you know when we're sitting at a table when we're walking in the store that people will hear us speaking words of, for God to help edify and now Luke 7 after Jesus finished all that he had to say in the hearing of the people on the mountain he entered Capernaum now a centron had a bond servant who was held in honor and highly valued by him who was sick and at the point of death. And when the centron heard of Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, requesting him to come and make his bond servant well. And when they reached Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying, He is worthy that you should do this for him. For he loves our nation, and he has built us our synagogues. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centron sent friends to him, saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not sufficiently worthy to have you come under my roof. Neither did I consider myself worthy to come to you. But speak the word, just speak the word, and the servant boy, my servant boy, will be healed. For I am also a man subject to authority with soldiers under me. I say, go, and he goes, and another come, and he comes to my bond servant. Do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled at him, and he turned, and he said to the crowd that followed him, I tell you, not even in all Israel have I found such great faith as this, that he just say, do, you know, have the ser servant just do this. And uh, I believe. 
And when the messengers who had been sent returned to the house, they found the bondservant who had been ill quite well. And soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples in a great throng accompanied him. And as he drew near the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large gathering from the town was accompanying her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. He went forward and touched the f funeral bier, and the pallbearer stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, Arise from the dead. Arise from death. And the man, he said, Arise. And the man who was dead sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Praise God. This is the kind of thing God wants for us. Profound and reverent fear seized them all, and they began to recognize God and praise and give thanks, saying, A great prophet has appeared among us, and God has visited his people in order to help and care for and provide for them. And this report concerning Jesus spread through the whole of Judah and all the country round about. And John's disciples brought him, who was now in prison, word of all these things. And John summoned to him a certain two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you he who, who is come, or shall we look for another? So the men came to Jesus and said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is come, or shall we look for another? In that very hour, Jesus was healing many people of sickness and distressing bodily plagues and evil spirits. And many who were blind, he gave a free, gracious, joy-giving gift of sight. And he replied to them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news of the gospel preached to them. That's what Jesus said. The blind receive sight their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news of the gospel preached to them. And blessed, happy with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, apart from outward condition and be envied, is he who takes no offense in me and who is not hurt or resentful or annoyed or repelled or made to stumble. And the messengers of John having departed, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What do you go out to the desert to gaze on? A reed shaken and swallowed by the wind or swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft garments? Behold, those who wear fine garments and live in luxury are in the courts or palaces of kings. What then did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you, and far more than a prophet. This is the one of whom it is written, Behold, I sent my messengers before your face, who shall make ready your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John, but he that is inferior in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people who heard him, even the tax collectors, acknowledged the justice of God, being hap baptized with the baptism of John, but the Pharisees and the lawyers of the Mosaic law annulled and rejected and brought to nothing God's purpose concerning themselves by refusing and not being baptized by John. So to what shall I compare the men of this generation and what are they like? They are like little children sitting in the marketplace calling to one another and saying, We piped to you and you did not dance. We sang dirges and wailed and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come neither eating bread nor drinking wine and you say he has a demon the son of man has come to eat and drink and say behold a man who is glutton and a wine drinker a friend of tax collectors and notorious sinners yet wisdom is vindicated by all shown to be true and divine by her children by their life character and deeds one of the pharisees asked jesus to dine with him and he went into the pharisee's house and reclined at the table and behold a woman of the town who was an especially wicked sinner when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house brought an alabaster flask of ointment. That's where, see, she comes to where Jesus is and Jesus happened to be in a place where she would go. 
and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and she wiped them with the hair on her head and kissed her feet and anointed them with the anointment of perfume. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would surely know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a notorious sinner, a social outcast devoted to sin. And Jesus replying to, to him, to Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, Teacher, say it. A certain lender, see he read his, he knew what he was thinking. A certain lender of money had two debtors, one owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. When they had no means of paying, he freely forgave them both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one I take it, for whom he forgave and canceled more. And Jesus said, You've decided correctly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she, from the moment I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet tenderly and ca caressingly. You did not anoint my head with, with oil, but she has anointed my feet with costly perfume. Therefore I tell you, her sins, many as they are forgiven her, there are, are forgiven her, because she has loved much, but he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? But Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go, enter into peace and freedom from all the distresses that are experienced as the result of sin. Hallelujah. That is such a beautiful part to me. First of all, Jesus is in a place she's not afraid to go. It's a Pharisee's house. So sometimes we need to go to places and be in places where people can receive, you know, the kingdom if we're led. And then he tells this story about how she's forgiven much because she, she's the one who brought him the water, who cared about him, who anointed his feet with the oil, well, who kissed her feet with rare oil. She has anointed my feet. She's basically, she's a sinner, but she's anointed my feet. How could she do that without knowing? Well, she had the desire, the care, the, de the love for the Lord. She was loving the Lord, and that's how the anointing, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us is the anointed one in us. And he, he you gave me no kiss, but she, in the moment I came in, has not ceased kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with perfume that was costly. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, many as they are, are forgiven. Because she has loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. So the more we receive, the more we, we know what we've done, but we receive and we humble ourselves and come to the Father, come to Jesus. You know, I mean, he, she had tears. And that's what was cleaning his feet, the tears, the true repentance heart, the love, the, the true heart unto him, the true repentant heart is what he's looking for. And it's beautiful. What a beautiful story all these stories are. So, Lord, we just thank you for this word to us right now. We thank you that in Matthew 9, that Jesus had, had healed the paralytic and the tax collector he dealt with and he questioned and he was questioned about fasting again in the old in the other yesterday I think it was we read again about this this is in every gospel there's there's about the oil the wine the new wine and the oil the girl restored to life and a woman is healed the two blind men healed the mute man speaks the compassion of Jesus and then we're reading in Luke Luke 7 about this woman who who just loved Jesus who who came with such a humble heart and she and she could not stop just loving him with her heart with her it didn't matter how much expense the perfume even was it didn't matter nothing mattered to her but just to love him just to trust him just to love him
Jesus heals the Santron servant. Jesus heals the son of a, raises the son of a widow, and John the Baptist sends the messengers to Jesus. And the sinful woman that's forgiven. All these scriptures are beautiful, but this one really touched me so much the tonight. So each one, as they speak to you, you know, highlight it, write it down in your devotional, write your name next to it because God is speaking to you. But he here we see how his love, the way he loved, the way it was different than what the way we think it is. It's different. God make God is different. He makes all things beautiful in his time. And he, he's different. He looks at things different. And he sees things different. And we're led by him. We're led to be in a certain place. We're led to receive Jesus, to look to Jesus in a different way. Look where people are at in a different way and receive them unto Jesus. Like the, you know, the labors are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send forth labors. So we ask you, Lord, to send forth labors into the field because it's ripe. It's ripe. The fields are ripe and ready to be harvested. Help us be soul winners. Thank you, Father, for the healings that you gave the people. The one man who said, well, just say the word and I will believe. And he saw the faith, such great faith. And for the woman who, each woman, the woman who lost her, her son and, and got him back because Jesus healed him and brought him back to life. Father, we want to walk in these powerful things you told us that the lame will walk the blind will see the deaf will hear and uh the dead will come arise again the dead will rise and lord these are signs and wonders that you have for us even now today for the kingdom of god is is um is joy it's it's joy in the holy ghost it's everything good it's everything good god has he has healing, he has divine health, he has divine wealth, he has divine um, power to heal us physically, emotionally, financially, spiritually, in every way. Thank you, Father God, that your love <coughs> reaches, reaches to the heavens, your righteousness to the skies. And we just praise you, Father, that your love is so deep, so strong, so wide, that we would walk in this faith We'd walk in these gifts of the Spirit. We would believe. We would receive. We would be humble like this woman. Even though she had sinned, she was so humble, crying with her tears, wetting his feet, cleaning his feet, his feet with her tears, um, anointing the anointing oil, pouring that perfume on him that was so costly. It didn't matter because she was so thankful she was just with Jesus. She was loving him. She was caring for him. She realized who he was. The Messiah, Jesus, who takes away the sin of the world, who loves, who's there's no there's no evil in him, there's only love, and so Lord, we just reach out and receive for others to come to Jesus, and we want to be that love, that light, with God's love flowing through us, and we just thank you for this word, we thank you for your love, we thank you for your forgiveness, and remember. Your words are your way to victory. I'll see you next time. I'm fortunate. And if you need to know Jesus, just reach up and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Thank you that you take take this life and do something with it, with it. Forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from my sin. Thank you for these stories that I heard that Jesus said and did or that people, the way they, they were with him and the way he spoke to them and the way he he is with us we just i just thank you and i love you and now you're lord of my life and i'm going to watch i'm listen to the word every day now i'm going to read the word i'm going to listen to the word i'm going to hear what you have to say because you are my lord so i'm glad you're saved now and remember your words are your way to victory comment on the end on below, below and and subscribe and and be part of this great time of reading through the word in a year. God bless you.